West Virginia football hoping to continue its uh, improbable ride through the Big 12. They come in at 2-0 and on a Thursday night showdown against Houston and old foe Dana Hogerson. We've got Steve Helwick uh, here to help us break down Houston, West Virginia. Important game in the Big 12 for the Mountaineers. Steve joins us from Hustle Belt and Underdog Dynasty on SB Nation. Steve, how you doing today? I'm doing great. We have football, college football every single day for the rest of the week, starting Tuesday. And it's a great time of the year. And this one's going to be a Thursday night game, national televised. I'll be there in action at Houston at TDECU Stadium. And for those in Houston, it's affordable fun right now. I saw tickets as low as $1 on SeatGeek with fees. So this is a game that anybody in the city can attend maybe create a good atmosphere for Houston to get their first big 12 win or for West Virginia, they can continue being undefeated in the big 12 when they were picked 14th of 14th in big 12 media day preseason poll. I've heard no fighting words between the two in regards to the past relationships that I just referenced Uh, Neil Brown in listening to his news conference, gave all credit to Dana Hogerson, the things that he accomplished at West Virginia, of course, that final team with uh, one of the final teams he had there with Will Greer vied for the Big 12 championship. Of course, they had that Orange Bowl victory against Clemson uh, with uh, Geno Smith at the controls. Uh, Good run for Dana Hogerson there. Not having a a good season thus far at two and three with uh, Donovan Smith, the old Texas Tech quarterback uh, manning the controls. Yes, uh, it's been Uh, It's been trying time for Houston. I think that Rice loss, which looks a lot worse after Rice lost to UConn last week, I think that Rice loss was what lost a bit of the fan base this year and some of the interest. I mean, Houston started the season with an incredible crowd against UTSA. They were really excited for Big 12 play. They beat UTSA as home underdogs because that Roadrunner team had accomplished a lot the past few years. And it seemed like they held all momentum and it just stonewalled in that overtime loss to Rice. The TCU crowd just wasn't as into it, and Houston's team has struggled since. The TCU game was more of a – the defense was getting stopped, but the offense couldn't generate anything. They went that game without an offensive touchdown. And then against Texas Tech in their next Big 12 game, it was kind of the opposite. The offense actually got things jump-started out of the gate for once. They had 28 first-half points, but they didn't record a single stop in the first half against Texas Tech and Texas Tech – Breeze past Houston 49-28 with a couple second-half touchdowns to put that one away. So it's been a rough start for Houston so far. They haven't established consistency on either side of the ball. But this is a game against West Virginia team that isn't scoring too much. So as long as Houston can get their offense past this West Virginia defense, which has looked great so far, they looked great against TCU, they looked great against Pitt, looked great against Texas Tech, then Houston just needs to get a few drop few sustainable drives going in this one because West Virginia is not a team that's going to pass 200, 300 yards on you per game. They'll eat up clock. They'll run it with Garrett Green. They'll run it with C.J. Donaldson. Try to eat up time and possession. They're, I think, uh, 11th in the country in that right now. So as long as Houston can get more production like that first half against Texas Tech, the Cougars can pull off the home upset again this year and get their first ever Big 12 win. Well, despite the record, it seems like Houston, yeah, definitely can threaten a, a defense. They've got uh, Samuel Brown leading the wide receiver core. They they always, under Dana Hogerson, have guys that will make plays in space, will create a lot of yardage. It's about playing a decent enough defense, and it's about eliminating mistakes on offense. So just kind of your overview of the Houston offense and some uh, some personnel that we're going to see on Thursday night. It's a really good passing attack, I think, that Houston has. Donovan Smith's done a pretty good job this year of remaining relatively mistake-free. He has a 9-3 to touchdown interception ratio. He has a couple games without a turnover also. He didn't didn't commit a turnover in the last two games against Texas Tech and Sam Houston and also in the opener against UTSA. So he's done a good job of taking care of the ball this year. And he seems to get more comfortable in the Houston offense as the weeks progress. The last two weeks, he's reset his season highs in passing yards. He had a really good game against Texas Tech, 335 passing yards, four touchdowns. And although Houston lost Tank Dell, who's now a star in the making for the Houston Texans, he was a country's leading receiver last year, Houston still is loaded in the receiving core. That trio of Sam Brown, who came from West Virginia, he's a West Virginia transfer, which is important to note this week. Sam Brown, Joseph Manjack, the fourth who came from USC a few years ago, and then Matthew Golden, the true sophomore. That's one of the better receiving cores in the Big 12. All three of them have varying skill sets. 
that can really progress this Houston offense. So as long as Houston's offensive line gives Donovan Smith some time for some of these routes to develop, these Houston guys can get open. Matthew Golden has impressive separation. Sam Brown, he's a big, strong receiver, impressive set of hands. These guys can get Houston's offense far on Thursday night. The running game is a bit more questionable for Houston. It's gotten better lately. They're switching their number one running back to Parker Jenkins. He got his first start against Sam Houston a few weeks ago, and he had a 100-yard game in there, had three touchdowns in the first half. So Parker Jenkins is the guy that Dana Holgerson's wanted to ride all season, and he's looking pretty good recently. But they also have Tony Mathis Jr., who was West Virginia's leading rusher last year, another West Virginia transfer in this game, who could play a supporting role in the run game if healthy. He's had some injury issues this year. So Houston's run game, they haven't had as much success. That was one of the problems against TCU is they couldn't establish any bit of a run. So TCU runs a drop eight defense, and then the passing game just is facing tons of third and long situations because they can't get anything in the run, and they're throwing low probability plays. So establishing the run on this West Virginia defense would be huge because this West Virginia passing defense is first in the country allowing an opponent's a 50% completion percentage. So their passing defense has been incredible this year. I mean, other than like that first busted coverage against Penn state uh, on that first drive of the season, they've been pretty sound and the scores definitely show it. Yeah. I am a bit surprised that uh, Houston is only 76th in uh, yards per play 53rd in total offense. And as you mentioned, uh, West Virginia, uh, efficient to a certain extent on offense, but it's really been the defense that has been just rock solid, only giving up 10 points to Texas Tech, 21 to TCU in its most recent wins. And I know Pitt's struggling way beyond most of us had predicted, but still six points uh, against Pitt. Uh, so their defense has certainly uh, led the way. Uh, any thoughts on the West Virginia defense in this matchup against Houston? Yes, uh, Lee Koba, their linebacker, has done just an excellent job this season. He had a standout game, I thought, against TCU last week with 11 tackles, had a big sack in there, and he's just the heart of the defense that I think is going to be a force in limiting the Houston run game there. And also, one of their cornerbacks, Beanie Bishop, is a name that I have my eyes on. This game's going to come a lot down to the Houston receivers versus the cornerbacks. Beanie Bishop already has a pair of interceptions this year, and he's among the country's le leading leaders in pass deflections with seven. So I think that Bishop's another guy that you're going to see. I'm curious which receiver, if they shadow him with a receiver or if they're going to have him line up on one side of the field because Houston has really – Joseph Manjack's a great receiver by all means, but teams are going to probably focus on Sam Brown and Matthew Golden the most. So I'm curious to see which matchup he draws the most in – on Thursday in this one because Houston does have several talented receivers that can pierce through opposing defenses. So West Virginia's defense, they've done a great job against both the run and the pass. While I said that they allow 50% completion percentage, they only allow 3.3 yards per carry on the ground. And Texas Tech, who is the same offense that put up 49 on Houston, well, two of those were special teams touchdowns, but still Texas Tech, they've looked explosive the last two weeks against Baylor and Houston. They were held to just 13 points by West Virginia. West Virginia did a really good job of stifling Texas Tech's passing game in that one and trying to get Texas Tech uh, limiting them through the air. So West Virginia's defense, I think, has done a magnificent job this season, far beyond what many of us expected. And right now, they're undefeated in the Big 12. The only other team that can claim that is Oklahoma at the moment. So credit to Neil Brown and his defensive staff for really spearheading this run that they're on. 36th in total defense, uh, top 30 in yards per play, and in pass efficiency defense uh, for West Virginia. And we noted the uh, point totals have been minuscule in recent weeks against uh, bad offenses, but also some capable offenses. Mm -hmm. We'll put them in that category as well. Uh, but limiting those teams to far less than uh, the rest of their opponents on the schedule. Uh, Steve, when we look at West Virginia offensively, Certainly not lighting up the scoreboard, but playing complementary football to what their defense provides. C.J. Donaldson comes into this season as one of the marquee backs in the Big 12, but he's only averaging four yards per carry. Uh, they do have some offensive line strength there, uh, starting with their center, Zach Frazier, who's an All-American, and a couple other offensive linemen uh, at the guard positions that are considered among the best in the Big 12. So you would think that 
uh, they would focus on protecting the football, keeping the football, running the clock, and beating up Houston up front. That's exactly what they've done this season so far. They're only committing one an average of one turnover per game, which is one of the better marks in the country. And this was a team that returned a lot of offensive line talent. You mentioned Zach Frazier, the center, but they had as experienced of an offensive line as anyone in the Big 12. And that just shows you how valuable play in the trenches is just because that's really carrying the team right now. It's carrying the offense and it's controls the clock throughout the games and likes to run the ball a lot. Garrett Green, he's not somebody that's going to throw for 200, 300 yards a game, uh, missed a game with injury already. And West Virginia's defense didn't really, uh, West Virginia's offense didn't really change its scheme too much. Just adding another running quarterback in their place. And Green's good at picking up yards, even on design passing plays. We saw a bit of that against Penn State when he had 71 yards in that game. And we saw it to an even greater extent against TCU when he had 80 rushing yards in that game. So Garrett Green's pretty talented, can fight for some of those extra yards. He's not the biggest quarterback. He's just 5'10", 5'11", but he, he's a very tough runner, I think. And then C.J. Donaldson, the former tight end, yeah, he's somebody who can bruise for those short yardage situations and get convert those third and short second and shorts and West Virginia has done a really good job of that this year so they're not a team that's going to drop 40 on you in their wins they're going to play sound defense they're going to just hog up as much clock as possible rely on the offensive line to gain some push in the trenches and that's been a winning formula for them so far I mean the problem with that is if the defense does have breakdowns if Houston does manage to get a few scoring possessions in this game, they're not a team that I don't think can play from behind. They played from ahead throughout most of the season, never trailed by more than one score against TCU. So if anyone establishes a double digit lead on them, I think that could be a concern going forward. But West Virginia is also conversely, it's not a team you want to play from behind against and Texas tech and Pitt learned that the hard ways uh, earlier in the season. Houston, uh, number 106 in total defense, 100th even in yards per play defense. Uh, the pass efficiency is much better on that side of the ball. And considering, yeah, West Virginia's limitations, you would think that they would have a, a decent uh, game against uh, Garrett Green in regards to limiting him. Uh, although the West Virginia offense, again, limits him to a certain extent because of the style of play. And it's more about will West Virginia control the line of scrimmage and do what they've done against their their previous uh opponents we got steve helwick uh breaking down west virginia and houston it's a thursday night game in houston west virginia at 2-0 and and it's very funny to consider steve that with the oklahoma win over texas texas and west virginia do not play if you look at the west virginia schedule and this is extrapolating way out into the distance though that other than oklahoma they could go into that game, the ninth game, the 10th game of the season at eight and one, you know, where we're looking at a lot of games against the likes of UCF and Iowa State and those those kind of teams that that are going to be winnable games for sure. Uh, that that West Virginia, they actually control their own destiny to get to a Big 12 championship game. Yes, I, I noticed that last week and. Uh, Oklahoma State looks a little better after that Kansas State win, and I always trust Mike Gundy. I followed college football since 07. I've never seen Oklahoma State have a losing season before. Their last one was in 2005. So I'm trusting Oklahoma State a bit more after what they did Friday night in Stillwater against Kansas State. So that could be a tough one the following week after the Houston game. UCF, they've been a mess ever since blowing that 28-point lead to Baylor. So that's a game that I think that a lot of Big 12 teams – are looking forward to. I know they have more of an explosive offense, but they've had some quarterback injuries this season with John Rice Plumley, and they haven't been able to get anything going on the defensive side of the ball. So that's definitely a winnable matchup for West Virginia. I want to learn more about BYU. BYU has been very interesting this year. I saw that Kansas game, which was a track meet in the first half, and then Cincinnati the next week. Their offense wasn't able to establish anything. I think their only first half touchdown was a pick six until the final like 30 seconds they just had this three play 75 yard drive and then the offense just got going for the rest of the game from there so BYU is a bit of a question mark to me I want to see them more in big 12 games to see how they fare so yeah those are the three the four games that they have against Oklahoma going up and all of them are winnable the Oklahoma State and BYU are the tougher of the two games and both of those ones are in Morgantown where West Virginia has thrived with home field advantage this year 
So yeah, West Virginia, they're really impressive. Neil Brown did say a big 12 media day. He said, I guarantee you are not going to finish 14th. And people were making jokes. They're like, okay, maybe you'll be 13th. Maybe you'll be 12th. No, this West Virginia team, they came to play on defense. They came to play on the offensive line and they look like a good team so far. All you need is just probably a better passing game. And then this team could be in that eight, nine win category, but that's, that's my hesitation on thinking that they're going to win all these games right now, because when you're scoring just that minimum amount of points, you're susceptible yep. to upsets a lot more. So Absolutely. West Virginia's defense has done a great job so far this year, but I don't know if they'll be able to beat everyone except for Oklahoma on the rest of their schedule. But yeah, they avoid Texas. They avoid Kansas state. It's a favorable schedule for the Mountaineers and this big 12 it seems like Oklahoma and Texas are in a class of their own right now. And the rest is just a pick them every single week. Yeah. And our friends in Vegas are giving us indication of what they think of West Virginia. And they're not completely sold at this point. And they typically know what they're talking about minus one. So it's a base, basically a pick them game at Houston. Uh, Steve Helwake, you can catch his work at underdog dynasty and also hustle belt on SB nation. Steve, anything else on this one? No, I'm going to be there Thursday night. I said once again, for anybody who's in the Houston area, this is as cheap as a ticket as you'll get, and I recommend you'll go. Uh, they'll, they're doing a blackout atmosphere at Houston. I, I think it'll be a decent atmosphere for a Thursday night, even though Houston fans aren't really the most sold on the team right now. It's a Thursday night national TV game, and who knows if they get that same boost that Oklahoma State got with that weeknight national TV game last Friday night against Kansas State where everything just suddenly seemed to – fall in Oklahoma State's favor after a disastrous start to the season. So who knows if this could be the game that Houston turns things around. I'm looking forward to it. Steve, we always appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Appreciate it.